uh, François, it will get even faster. I need to stand up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you uh, for Thierry and SN for inviting us uh, to this great conference. So Patrick gave me a challenge. He asked me to do in seven minutes what I did in Stanford last week in 40 minutes. So <laughs> one of the uh, main things of quantum is speed. So I will try to be uh, as fast as I can. So we've talked a lot about AI. AI is three pillars. As a matter of fact, I hate this word artificial intelligence. Remember, Bergson says the machine is the arm of the workers. I'm usually talking about augmented intelligence, shared intelligence like Waze, but I don't like this artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence, augmented intelligence is three pillars. The hardware, you have then um, the transmission and uh, the software. Why do we talk so much about AI since, you know, three, four, five years? There is three reasons. The first one is technology has increased the power, the speed by incredible numbers. And for the first time in the industry, the three pillars has uh, grown very fast. The second, we all experienced ChatGPT in uh, December. And ChatGPT, now everybody talks about that. And you have letters or speech done by ChatGPT. Mine is not done by ChatGPT, by the way. The last one is AI, nobody understands it. It's complicated, and it's a very good tool for journalists uh, because nobody understands it, or the media, or the clickers. It can be fear, you know, you have the Cold War. So it has been a material used by the media at length to scare us. So uh, don't worry, it's not scary. I've, you know, um, as you said, uh, artificial intelligence starts uh, really in 1936, in fact. Uh, then Turing team started in 1953, and the first outcome went in 1956. I've been involved in AI since 1982, so I've seen the evolution and uh, the, uh, um, the use explosion of the power. So today, I'm going to talk about quantum. So quantum, I would say, is the third revolution. You know what is a revolution and evolution? iPhone 1 was a revolution. iPhone 15 is an evolution. You know, there is no, not a lot of things. So the first story of quantum, you know this famous uh, picture? You had Planck, Schrodinger, Einstein at the Solvay uh, um, headquarters. The first meeting talk about what quantums, and then you have all the quantum physics, electrons, atoms, uh, photons, and stuff like that. 19 50s, 1970s, introduction of transition, transistors, lasers, and other technology. Since 2020, a lot of labs uh, are start to look at what is quantum, can it be applied, and how quantum and AI are going to transform the world. So, uh, quantum is easy to, to understand. There were three revolutions. The first was analog computers. Analog is uh, from 0 to 100. Then we move to 0, 1, bits and bytes. And now it's time to come back to a much more natural model, which is photons, which is electrons, and also uh, atoms. The nature hates binary. You know, in some country, uh, you have Swiss and cheddar. In some other country, you have 365 cheese. We are moving to the 365 cheese uh, technology, because uh, as a human, we are much more inclined to do analog, which is a very smooth transition from zero to one, than in the brutal zero to one. So quantum is going to use a lot of natural things, where photons will talk to photons, atom to atoms, and there is a huge amount of energy available on this transformation. So what drives uh, Quantum timeline, we, we, my colleague uh, Toby talked about post-quantum crypt cryptography. Um, there will be a huge revolution for quantum. I give you just an example about cybersecurity. I used to, uh, I won the contract for the Olympic Games in London in 2012. We had 700,000 attacks per day. I talked to the Minister of the Olympics two weeks ago, and there was a forecast of 5 million attacks per day. It's huge. It will be robots all over the world. Uh, imagine if you are a hacker, you're famous because you ask a ransomware, 
But also, if at the final of the 100 meters everything stops, you're a hero. So it's time now to, to move to another uh, step, another uh, technology uh, leapfrog, which is a quantum. And post-quantum cryptography is a future of cryptography where you crypt, you transport, and you decrypt. And when the transport, it's impossible to attack. So at least we'll have soon a quantum-safe environment. So what is very interesting is quantum is power, is size, is energy, very low energy, and it's also sensing. Um, as an example, many of you have this, this uh, smartwatch which analyzes a heartbeat. The sensing, um, the quantum sensing will be able to analyze the magnetic field of your heart. So it's one million more accurate than anything else. So the power of uh, quantum computing, quantum technology, and AI will absolutely transform the world. There is plenty of replication. Uh, I was talking about uh, sensing. Um, when you look at medicine as an example, when you're sick, it's already too late. Because the weak signals you get, you're tired, it hurts a little bit, uh, and then you go to doctor, and the doctor asks you questions, symptoms, pathology, and then have small talks. The quantum sensing will be at some point embedded in your body, for those who want, of course, the body is obliged, will allow to do real-time analysis of your entire metabolism, look into uh, the web through AI to the pathology. So when you go to the doctor, as an example, the 30 minutes slot you will have with him will be five minutes uh, pathology and 25 minutes talking about small, the, the, the kids, the holidays, whatever. It's the intelligence, emotional, uh, emotional intelligence, sorry, of the doctor will be at its best. Um, another uh, uh, explanation or application is drug discovery. We went through the COVID, and during the COVID, we were very late. You know, it's about 10 to 15 years to, um, to uh, develop a drug. The quantum simulation system will allow to develop drugs in two to four years. So it's not one day, it's not one month, but that it will be a huge revolution so that you can, uh, depending on new illness, you will be able to develop new drugs. Same for materials. Uh, for aerospace or for luxury brand. Now there is lots of vegan rich people who want to have a Hermes uh, Kelly bag, uh, not with leather. So it will help also some brand to manufacture new uh, materials in a very short period of time. So in a summary, there is a lot of different things. I have a f small film for you and then I will be done. Solutions. Here, we leverage the groundbreaking power of AI and quantum. For life science applications, we're using algorithms to calculate the quantum mechanical interactions between drugs and their targets. This improves the odds for success when entering clinical trials, which affects how quickly and cheaply life-saving drugs can be successfully brought to market. Today, computer-assisted drug discovery is either too slow to use on large numbers of molecules or too inaccurate to trust. But our unique AQ tools use artificial intelligence as a coach, achieving high accuracy without compromising speed. So, in a summary, the future is now, and be ready for this huge revolution after 35 years of evolution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francois. So, uh, before Thierry interrupts me, so I will open the floor for questions. <laughs> but uh, uh, just a quick summary. So, what we've seen, uh, tried to show you today is that what? there is a breakthrough with so-called generative AI or supporting large language model that was explained. That's what put it on, on uh, draw the attention and put it on the top of the agenda because there is a, a new future. 
It's already deployed to manage complex systems and it can help solve some of our most pressing challenges. Another challenge that comes is cybersecurity. And if you like AI the way it is today, you will love it tomorrow with quantum. So uh, if I may summarize <laughs> the session like this, thank you. So.